Joining me now at the GEPF Thought Leadership Conference, Abel Sitole, Chief Executive Officer at the Public Investment Corporation. Welcome, Abel. Thank you, Chloe. Thanks very much for having me. Abel, so what have been some of the highlights from this year's conference for the PIC and for you as Chief Executive Officer at PIC? The, the first one, of course, is in a sense the general mood of gloom uh, in terms of the investment environment. Um, driven by first geopolitical uh, considerations, um, uh, the, 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 the war uh, in Ukraine, of course some people would like to call it an operation, um, that has had a significant impact on uh, the investment environment. First of course the impact on um, uh, 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 fossil fuels that are still used quite predominantly in um, the economy. And then, of course, you have uh, specific commodities that are impacted. Uh, for instance, the biggest one that most people would have experienced would have been oil. Of course, first is, 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 is the petrol, the price uh, at the pump, and the second is the cost of fuel, and of course, other food um, commodities that people would have actually seen the rise in prices. So that's the, that's the first one. The second one, of course, is, to, is, is the impact of COVID, which to some extent actually is, is much more significant in, in its impact than I think the, 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 the war in Ukraine has been, although that's sometimes felt much more immediately, but the, the, the COVID impact has been much more significant. But both of them uh, have had a significant in, uh, impact on supply chains. Um, so the movement of, of, of goods has been uh, highly impacted. Um, and again, that then finds its way to different commodities um, and goods that we um, buy as ordinary uh, citizens, as, as people uh, that we experience. Um, that goes beyond what's going in, in, in the markets, but of course when people don't buy or buy, that has a significant impact on our investments because actually as an, as an investor, as an asset management, all that we're doing is buying future income of the entities in which we actually are investing. Therefore, they rely quite heavily on uh, people buying their goods or the services that are being provided. Then of course the impact of that in, 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 in real terms on what we do is the rise in inflation. Uh, now, inflation, of course, again, is experienced by us as ordinary consumers in the um, increase in the uh, 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 prices of goods. But the way it impacts our investments, of course, is that it, it, it affects um, our equities market in a sense that the, the less you buy because you, your, your purchasing power has reduced, um, the less we get from companies through earnings that actually in, in impacts our, the returns that we're getting as an investor on the one hand. And on the other side, of course, is that it actually has an, an impact on um, the, 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 the promises that uh, the people whose money we look after uh, are either met or not met, uh, what we normally call liabilities. Uh, those normally um, are reduced because interest rates go up. Uh, when interest rates go up, it means that you, in a sense, technically require uh, less to be able to get the same amount of um, a money that's needed to be able to meet the promises that you make. So I think that's been a, 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 a big theme uh, of the conference so far. Uh, but there were other um, very, very important themes that, that are, again, are quite more meaningful to an asset manager like us. Um, as an asset manager, you look only at one side of what we call the pension fund um, 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 scope. Uh, pension funds are worried about two things. On the one side is what we call liabilities, which is really the combination of all the promises that they've made in terms of the benefits that they need to pay to their members. Uh, and then, of course, that requires physical cash to be able to, to pay those benefits. Those, of course, we call assets. So pension funds worry both about the liabilities, meeting the promises that they make uh, through the assets that the members have contributed or have been invested by people like ourselves. We as an asset manager tend to look only at the asset um, to say how do we take uh, the, uh, the monies that has been accumulated, invest it to get uh, number one security of those so we can pay it back when the time comes and to earn a good return on those assets. So it's a very, very beneficial thing for an asset manager like us to look also at the other side of the equation. So not only worry about um, how we uh, take this money, take risk to generate the return, but to also to understand how it, it should be impacted by the actual promises that have been made by our clients to their uh, beneficiaries in terms of the promises of benefits that they're going to get. Absolutely. So it seems to me that the pension funds have got this critical role of trying to balance 
having assets, meeting their pension obligations when they come correct, due. Correct. But how are you as asset managers finding, cha finding it challenging to navigate a higher inflation environment, rising interest rates, real rates being squeezed? Where are you finding opportunities? Um, so, so, so again, from an asset management perspective, the, 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 the challenges I've already indicated is um, inflation basically, I, th I think you know the definition it's of, of inflation in, 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 in common language is uh, um, um, lots of rents chasing few goods. Um, or or in, 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 in a different way is that um, the same amount of rent uh, is no longer able to buy the same amount of goods. So the, the challenge there is that consumers in a sense are, are battling um, to, 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 to buy. So you, the immediate thing that you would see, for instance, if you go to retailers, to, to the shops, and you say, how much are people buying the stuff that um, shops are producing? You would have seen in the last week or so, one of the big chains in South Africa closing down branches, a big chain that's struggling um, because they're not getting enough people to come to buy the goods that they're actually providing for. So, 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 so to us, that chain in which we invest, by the way, um, uh, is going to struggle to meet the returns that we're expecting out of that uh, chain from the, the investments that we've made in it. Now, that, that's, that's how inflation actually in real terms impacts on, 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 on an asset manager. Um, it actually reduces the returns that you are able to achieve as, as, as a manager to the extent that it reduces the ability of consumers to participate uh, in the economy by buying goods and services. So Abel, the listed market in South Africa is shrinking. I mean, we've seen a delisting trend taking place on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Where are you possibly finding opportunity? I know infrastructure has now been classified as its own asset class under Regulation 28, and that matches the earnings profile or perhaps the time horizon of a typical pension fund. But what is the role of private markets, specifically private equity and private debt, in fulfilling certain return requirements? Well, so, so if, if, if a company delists and is still operating, it, will, it means that it continues in the, in the unstated environment. So, so in the first instance, we tend to prefer listed markets. Why? Uh, because listed markets are much more transparent. Um, uh, investors uh, have access to the same information, what we call uh, information uh, symmetry. Uh, so all investors know the same things about the, 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 the investment. Um, it, the, the minute a, that entity unlists, it continues to operate um, um, as it would have operated from an operational perspective. But from an investor perspective, it, it may be that you no longer have access to information that you might have had um, in the past. Um, it does not necessarily mean that by delisting the entity becomes a bad investment. It actually might actually be a good investment because chances are the reason why they are unlisting, there might be costs that are related to listing, which when they actually uh, become unlisted, those costs are no longer theirs. So therefore, it actually hopefully helps to, help to make you get a better return in, in that environment. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that we um, have unlistings. It's, it, it's a challenge in the sense that the information um, dynamics in the unlisted space are very, very different from the one in the, in the listed space. But you could end up with a company that performs much better uh, when it's unlisted than when, it, when, it, when it's not. So now the challenge is, um, given the, 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 the regulated exposure that most um, uh, pension funds can have in the unlisted environment, you might find that they will actually hit the ceiling in terms of the exposure. Fortunately, most pension funds are not there yet, so there's still scope to actually participate in the unstated environment. And I think that should be encouraged because it most, in most instances, you start to invest in the real economy as opposed to in the markets where, yes, you are investing in, in the real economy, but indirectly. Abel, thank you very much for sharing your insights. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much.